The tracks the rear tires make are beside those of the front. This condition is known as dog tracking or crabbing and can cause diagonal tire pattern wear as well as vehicle instability in some driving conditions. Position the vehicle on a flat surface with the road wheels pointing straight ahead. Uh, this is the, one of the worst videos ever. Alright, uh, ride height is the amount of distance between ground and specified part of the vehicle. The technicians use computerized alignment machine to ensure all angles are correct. Some technicians refer to proper alignment as a five wheel alignment, steering wheel included. The four common adjustments, we have shims, eccentric bolts, strut rods, and ball joint adjusting sleeves. Shim adjustments for front wheel is used on older rear wheel drive. So remember yesterday in my truck, mm -hmm. uh, this is what it would look like. So we take these nuts off right here, not off, but loosen them and put the shims right behind them. And then you tighten them back up, then you do your, uh, uh, you cast a sweep and camber sweep again and start all over pretty much. Then you have eccentric bolts or adjustment turns both attaching bolts and uh, to move the camber angle. You turns one bolt in one direction, the other bolt in the opposite direction. This is one version, the other version you saw in the Silverado. Strut rod is an adjustment point for caster on some vehicles. Older vehicles, they have strut rods. Then you got ball joint adjustment sleeve that gives the limited adjustment for caster and cam camber and it's often replaced with an aftermarket park with more adjustment potential. Uh, Fords use this. You'd have to loosen, this is on the um, upper control arm or upper knuckle. You would remove this bolt, you would pop this out and sometimes they're pretty stuck in there so you're going to have to fight it out. And you're going to have to get one that it has a the enough uh, degree of turns in there that when you put it in it automatically puts it in so once you put it in there so if it needs uh, let's say up to one positive camber you would need to get a bushing like this a ball a bushing that goes up to one let's say it, it'll work from 0.5 to 1.5 Tie rod assembly is to lengthen or shorten in order to adjust the toe. This is an adjustment sleeve just like you see at my Chevy S10. Alright, so, we got 15 minutes. Alright, vehicle wander. When you're test driving the vehicle and you're trying to figure out why this customer complaint says that it's uh, not driving straight. So a vehicle wander is a vehicle is not driving in exactly the direction the driver is steering. A drift is the driver is holding the steering wheel steady and the straight uh, steady straight, but the vehicle slowly begins to move either right or left. A pull is when it's felt when the driver feels steering wheel wanting to go to one side. Hard steering is the act of steering is difficult for the driver. Probably because your power steering pump died. A bump steer is when a vehicle turns upon itself when hitting a bump. Torque steer is when a pull that occurs heavy during heavy acceleration. Steering returns concerns memory steer. It results from binding conditions at any pivot points in the steering or suspension system. That means if you turn this wheel on to this car on. Uh, left and it stays left and it doesn't go back to center it means you have a memory steer. Uh, sticking or stuck ball joints, tie rods, strut bearings, idle arms, binding steering gear or something in a rack and pinion getting stuck. Um, noises can be tracked down through the use of a specialty tool called chassis ears. They're microphones that's placed in various locations on the vehicle and the earphones are worn by a technician when he's driving it. 
usually we want somebody else to be in the car while you're driving it. So you can figure out where to pinpoint where this noise is coming from. Tools commonly used in diagnosing suspension of wheel alignment. You have the wheel alignment machine, four post alignment rack, turntables, wheel clamps, and spec charts. Uh, shop manuals, specialty alignment tools, steering wheel holders, brake pedal, depressor, steering angle, sensor, calibration tools, dial indicators, and pry bars. You could use measuring tapes, steering system pullers, steering system tools, various lift devices, wheel chocks, electronic stethoscope. One of the most common problems in suspension system are play and looseness of parts. Diagnostic scan tools can retrieve diagnostic trouble codes and provide access to sensor data. To measure play, ball joints must be unloaded correctly. To diagnose suspension noise, have an assistant drive the vehicle or while not driving, bounce the vehicle up and down while listening for noise. And do you guys understand what um, unloaded ball joints are? You have no weights on it. Yeah, so remember when we were checking your uh, Silverado, we lifted up from the lower control arm, mm -hmm. right? Took the weight off of that, and then we took a pry bar underneath the tire to move it up and down. So how do how you check the upper ball joint the same? Um, the upper ball joint, uh, it's a movement of, you. yes, you got to keep get the wheel off the ground, and you got to move it up and down. Is That's the same. Ball? Not with a pry bar, with your hand. Only the lower ball joint is weighted. So the upper ball joint's only, Levado. Yeah. The upper ball joint's only holding it up from the top. Mm -hmm. So there's no weight on there. So that's why in the bottom you have to get the lower ball joint needs to be off, off the, off itself because that's where all your weight's on. Right. All right. Your upper ball joint doesn't do anything but hold it together and spin. To diagnose uh, body sway, move steering wheel back and forth to make the vehicle swerve. Right height can only be measured if the vehicle has properly inflated matching tires and no additional weight on the vehicle. You want to make sure you test the shock absorbers with unusual tire wear or soft or bouncy ride. You have additional tools for maintenance or repair. You have cold spring compressors, scan tools, spring compressor tools, ball joint press tools, and pickle forks. Air chisel, strut compressor, strut servicing kit, universal strut nut wrench, and 24 millimeter strut rod socket. Stabilizer components help prevent body roll when cornering. Worn shock absorbers will cause the vehicle to ride poorly, especially on rough roads. When the driver complains about the way a vehicle sits, cold springs should be inspected for wear and vehicle's ride height measured. Steering knuckles don't experience much wear but can be damaged in an accident. Or you take your, um, your ball joints and you're putting them all back on and you're hammering it with an air gun, like you use my air gun or my um, electric air gun, that thing is strong. It, and remember, it's tapered. So the more you ram that thing in there, it's going to split that hole. So don't do it too much. Ask me how I know. Hey, you got to make sure it's lined up. Correct. correct. Uh, because I've, I've done it once and they were not happy I had to get a new knuckle. You would think, you know, this thing is solid, you know, it's not going to break. Crack, snap, right in half. I, it just like split open the hole. I was like, oh, that's like it. When a driver complains about the way the vehicle sits, coal springs should be inspected for wear and vehicle's ride height measured. Steering knuckles don't experience much wear, but can be damaged in an access and never. Control arms don't you generally wear out, but the ball joints that connect the upper and lower control arms to the steering wheel will wear over time and need to be replaced. If grease fittings are present, uh, lube them. Um, by the way, don't lube them because you're being a nice person and all. You actually get paid to lube these things. So if you think it needs to be lubed, you should write. Steering components or suspension components have grease fittings, recommend lubing. So you get like 0.3 or 0.2 hours just to do this. Look for chopped tire wear and ride comfort problems. Could be signs of damaged strut assembly. 
Leaf springs need to be inspected whenever rod height does not match the manufacturer's specs. The uh, strut rod bushings wear degrade over time, so require replacement whenever they are loose. Torsion bars should be checked whenever the driver complains of suspension problems. Pre-alignment inspections ensure a vehicle is an appropriate candidate for alignment. Alignment always follows a specific order of adjustment. Always start at the rear, then rear caster, rear camber, and rear toe. Once you have that all set, move to the front, caster, camber, and toe. Because if you do this out of order, you're going to be doing it all over again. You're going to be fighting yourself. Toe out, and toe, tur toe out on turns, referred to as toot. I've never heard it called toot before until I read this book. Or Ackerman angle or track differential angle. SAI is an angle formed by imaginary line running through the upper and lower steering point pivots related to the plumb line. A rear thrust angle. Uh, problems can result from accident or other impact that bends the rear axle or axle mounting points. Damage to cradle can force wheels out of alignment, changing the caster camera and toe, and creating pull and tire wear issues. Any questions? Alright, let's go out to our meeting.